Sometimes a mask is just a mask. Hey everybody, Dan from On One back with another sneak peek video. People are really excited about the Super Select AI tool and its ability to automatically pick a region and add an adjustment to it. And those of you who have paid attention kind of can tell that it's creating a mask. And a lot of you are saying, well, what if I just want to create a mask using that same kind of select a region thing? Well, we do have that. It's kind of the secret little hidden brother of the Super Select AI tool, and that's the new Quick Mask AI tool. It replaces the old Quick Mask tool. It works the same way as Super Select does. Let me give you a couple examples. I'm going to show you one really practical use for it, and then one kind of fun one. Let's take this eagle first. This is a super noisy photo and a little out of focus. You guys have probably seen me use this photo on another demo. I'm going to zoom in even closer to you so you guys can take a look at it here at 200%. Background's very noisy, color noise, luminance noise, and our eagle's a little out of focus. So when I go down to noise and sharpening, and I want to be able to use both no noise and tack sharp together, I will click on the both button to do that. And it's going to do its best job of balancing the two. But keep in mind, the two are kind of trying to fight each other. One's trying to blur it, one tries to sharpen. So even though it's done a really nice job of reducing the noise in the background and bringing up the detail here in the eagle, if I zoom in really close, so I'm going to zoom in up here to 200%. You'll look in the background. You can still see there's a fine amount of noise in there where the algorithm's trying to sharpen it. So I'm going to show you how you can actually use layers and masks to be able to control that with even more ability. What I want to do is I'm going to create a copy of this layer, of this original raw photo. I'm just going to apply my settings here. And then in my layers palette, I'm just going to click on the duplicate button. So now I essentially have two copies of the raw photo. Each one can have their own non-destructive settings. Let me zoom back out to fit. What I want to do is change the settings on this upper layer so that it doesn't have any of the tack sharp applied to it. So I'm just going to unlock tack sharp. And I'm going to go down and I'll turn tack sharp and the micro sharpening off. And we'll apply that to the copy. Now, if we look at that background, the background is going to be super duper smooth again. There. So you can see it's very, very smooth green. None of that residual noise in there. But at the same time, we've also lost all the great sharpness that we had on the eagle. We want the best of both worlds, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a mask to blend the two together. So on the upper layer, I can just click on the mask. I'll go to my masking tools. And the third tool in the masking group is the Quick Mask AI tool. I'm just going to select that and pick on what I want to mask out. In this case, I want to mask out the eagle. So I just click to highlight the segments that make it up. And then I press the Done button at the top. And there you go. It's now created a mask. And if we look at the mask and it's hitting the O key on my keyboard, you can see that high quality mask that is generated for the eagle, even with that out of focus edge. And if we zoom in and we look really close, here we are back at 200. Background's nice and smooth eagles nice and sharp. All right, so that's one practical use. Let's show you kind of a more fun use of the tool. So I have this goofy picture of my son where he kind of looks like a superhero. So I want to make a composite where he really looks like a superhero. First thing I need to do is find a better background. Well, I went out to a stock agency and I found a background that I like better. This one, I kind of want to put him in front of that and make him look like a superhero. So to do that, I'm just going to grab both of those and I'm going to click on the Layers button. That's going to combine those two together into one new layered photo. So there's the background, and then on top of it, there's our foreground. Now, obviously, I need to remove all the background around him. It's another great place to use that Quick Mask AI tool. Let's go to the Masking Group, select the tool, and then just simply click on the regions that I want to get rid of in my photo. There we go, and hit Done. Bada bing, look at that. It's automatically masked out all that stuff in the photo that I don't want. Now I'll just use the transform tool to make him a little bigger in the frame. I want to zoom out so I have some more room to work here. Hold down the shift key while I make my adjustments so that it locks the aspect ratio. And I'll just kind of position him in there where I want him to be on my scene. Cool, that looks great. Now we'll go back to a fit view. I want to remove that Adidas logo from his shirt. So I'm going to go down to our retouch tools and I'll use the perfect eraser and watch. I can just paint out that whole logo all in one shot. 
the Perfect Eraser has been improved with this release as well. It's faster and builds better fill. Look at that. Looks completely natural, doesn't it? All right, I'm gonna make a couple more quick adjustments here. I wanna take the edge of the photo and I want to chisel it off a little bit. I wanna chisel the edge just because he was on a very light background going onto a dark background. I kinda of need to do that part manually. So I'm gonna to go to my mask refinement tools. I'm gonna to grab the chisel tool. Let me make it a little bit bigger here. And then I'm just gonna brush right along the edge. And what the chisel does is it just shaves off a pixel or two along the edge of a mask. If I want to do it all at once, like on this photo, I can just double click and boop, there you go. It just sucked in the edge of it a little bit. Think of it like an expand or contract of a selection. I can do the same thing with the blur and blur the edge a little bit too. That softened it just a little bit. All right, let's add a little bit of a grunge look so it looks a little more night. So I'll go to effects. We'll go to grunge. And I'm going to add kind of a strong, dark grunge look to him. That looks good. And now I want to kind of make the whole scene blue. Now, because I've got two different layers, I need to, I would either have to add a same adjustment to both or add a layer above that lets me do it. I'm going to use a color fill layer to make everything darker. So I'm going to click on the color fill button. I'll pick a dark blue color. That one looks good. Now, obviously I don't want it covering the whole photo, so I need to change my blending mode. So I'll click on the blending mode gear and I'll pick the one that I want, multiply, and then I'll use my opacity to dial in how much of that cool darkening look I like. There we go. That's looking pretty good. You know, one more thing for fun. Let's make it look like he's got laser beams coming out of his eyes. So I'm going to add one more color fill layer. This one I'm going to make red. And I'm going to hide it. So I'll click on the layer. I'm going to hit invert. So that's now hidden. Now I just need to paint it in. I'm going to paint it in with a custom brush. I'm going to go up to my brushes. There's lots of brushes we include. I've added some cool ones in here that look like sparkles from Obsidian Dawn. And I'll just pick one that I like. There we go. Let me make it the size that looks good for his eyes. There we go. And I'm just going to tap that right in the center of each eyeball. Bop. Bop. There we go. So now it looks like he's got red laser beam eyes. There we go. So that's kind of another way that you could create a composite using the Quick Mask AI tool to quickly generate a mask for you. There you go. Just another arrow in your masking quiver coming soon. Thanks for watching.